Hi y'all, in this video I just want to go over how we can use um, StatCrunch to help us with the problems in my math lab for completing an ANOVA table, getting an F test statistic, and also for doing the multiple comparisons um, from section 16.4. So I opened up one of our uh, problems from 16.3 where you are given the data and this particular problem has five different populations, each with about five, with five values in it. So it, it's, it's a lot of numbers. Um, and you just have to determine the F test statistic. So you can, of course, do this on your own. Here they have given you some summations to use the calculating formulas. But as I had stated clearly in one of the last videos, that for the test I'm going to give you some summary stats and just have you use the defining formulas. So for a problem like this, one of the things you want to immediately do is come over to the little blue rectangle and open your data in StatCrunch. So here you've got um, your five populations. Let me make this big. And we're going to come down to an analysis of variance. We are only doing a one-way analysis of variance. We are not bringing in multiple variables to look at. We're going to do our one-way. And we're going to select, make sure you select all of these. Hold the control key down. We'll select all the values. Um, we don't have our values in a single column, so don't worry about that. And go ahead and select um, Compute the Tukey HSD. That's what's going to allow us to do the multiple comparisons. If you recall in the last videos, I said your analysis of variance, your F test statistic, will let you know if your data has sufficient um, information, sufficient evidence in order to reject or not reject. In other words, does your data have sufficient evidence to say if you reject, then it's saying yes, there is a difference somewhere in these populations. But what the ANOVA test does not do is tell you where those differences are. That's where um, the Tukey comes in for the multiple comparisons. It actually then compares individual populations within your sample to see exactly where those uh, differences exist. Let's go ahead and hit compute and let's take a look at what we have here. All right, so the first thing it's going to give you are, are your um, summary stats for each column. So we have you know, you can see variable 1 through 5, they each had 5 values in it. You get the mean and the standard deviation for each of them. And then it's going to provide you with your analysis of variance table. And um, you can see the table looks like, instead of treatment, they're calling it columns. So again, that word is, is interchangeable with factor, treatment, columns. However, um, it's the individual populations. So we have the four degrees of freedom, 20 for that one. And then this 1,712.96 is going to represent your SSTR. And then this is going to be the 3,262 is your SSE. And then if we took 1712 divided by four, you get your 428 and so on. And there's your F statistic. Of course, this will also go ahead and give us a p-value. Now, one of the things we notice here is this is a rather large p-value of 0.06. It's greater than 0.05. Um, in doing this particular problem, we would not end up rejecting. So we would say that our data does not provide any evidence to say there's any differences. So that means we would also not expect to see any differences when we compare any two of the populations that we are given. And that's what a Tukey test does. So it starts, as you notice, 
with population from variable one, and it'll compare variable one with variable two. And here's what it's going to give you. It's gonna give you two different things. It's gonna give you the confidence interval and it's gonna give you a p-value. So the confidence interval, notice, goes from a negative to a positive, which means zero is included. And if you recall when we talked about comparing two population means, and you're looking at the difference of those means, if zero is included in that confidence interval, that means there really is not sufficient evidence to conclude there's a difference in those means. And this is clearly also stated with our p-value, which is a very large p-value, we would not. So there's no difference. In fact, just take a look at all of these p-values. They're rather large. And this um, supports our conclusion that we would not reject null hypothesis that they're all equal. So in this particular problem, you would see that all of the values, um, p-values are greater than 0.05, and every single one of these confidence intervals contains a zero. Okay, so now let's try, I'm going to pull up an example that, um, where we would reject the hypothesis and we need to find out where that difference exists. So here's another example. In this case, we have four regions of the country and we have a sample of uh, newly completed apartments, uh, the rent of these newly completed apartments. So we're gonna check our data at the 1% significance level. So let's open it up in StatCrunch. Okay, so we have our four columns, our four populations, and the various rents in each of those populations. So we're going to go ahead and click Stat, click ANOVA, and we're doing, of course, a one-way. You want to use your Control key to select all four areas and also opt to compute the two key. You can change the um, level of your two key. I believe this problem was 0.01, so we'll make it 0.99. I can't remember, but you can make it match the significance level of your problem. Go ahead and compute, and let's look at the results we get here. Again, here's our summary stats. We have our ANOVA table. We got a test statistic of 7.062 and a p-value of 0.00. One, which is clearly smaller than our alpha level, which was 0.01. So this would be a problem where you would reject the null hypothesis that all means are equal. But again, up to this point, you don't know where those differences exist among those four populations. So that's why we run the Tukey. So let's take a look at the Tukey results below so we can see where those differences exist. Um, so one thing you can kind of play around with first is before you even look at the Tukey, is go ahead and look at those means. So where do you think differences might exist? And then you can see if the data uh, reflects what your thoughts were. So I, I noticed that the Midwest is only 755, and I noticed that um, the Northeast is um, 1051. I would say there's probably a difference between the Northeast and the Midwest, perhaps between the Midwest and the West. Um, maybe even between the south and the west and the south or northeast. So let's take a look. So the way the Tukey results, it starts with northeast and compares northeast to all three regions. So again, we're looking for one of two things. We're looking for either, well, they're both going to occur at the same time. The confidence interval, you're looking for a confidence interval that does not contain zero. So Look at Midwest and Northeast, one that when you look at the means, we would think, oh, there's probably a difference between those. Notice our lower limit goes from a negative value and the upper limit's a negative value. There's no zero there. That tells you there's definitely a difference between the rent in the Northeast and the rent in the Midwest. This is also reinforced by our p-value, which is way lower than 0.01. So if I asked you which pairs do have differences. One of the pairs you would write are Midwest and Northeast. Now, comparing Northeast to South, nope, that's a large p-value and zero exists, so that would be a no. And comparing Northeast to West, you can see there's no difference there as well. 
So, so far we have the northeast with the midwest. So now we take northeast out of the picture because we've already compared that with everything and we look at midwest compared to the south. Notice that is a high p-value. Your confidence interval contains zero so that we don't, that, that does not have any difference. But look at midwest compared to the west. Now our lower and upper bound are both positive and our p-value is clearly smaller than 0.01. So there would be another set of differences between the Midwest and the West. And then when you take Midwest out of the picture, the only ones that need to be compared are the South and the West. And there is absolutely no difference between those. We have zero in our confidence interval and we have a p-value that is greater than 0.01. So the follow-up for the two key is, so, well, first of all, your ANOVA test declared yes concluded there are differences exist among those populations. The Tukey then comes out and says where those differences exist. So we found them to be between the Northeast and the Midwest, and also between the Midwest and the West. So you have two pairs that are different. Northeast and Midwest is one pair, Midwest and West. So that is how you read the Tukey for the test. You are not going to have to calculate any of these values. You will just simply need to, um, I will give you a Tukey result that will look very much like this and you tell me where those differences exist. That is all you're going to have to do on the test itself. For the Tukey problems, um, in StatCrunch, I just strongly encourage you, of course, um, so if we take a look at 16.4, where is it? There it is, 16.4. You can go ahead and open that information into StatCrunch and run that Tukey through StatCrunch. You have to go to ANOVA, then click the Tukey test, and you can get your results that way. Okay, hope that helps. Thanks.